Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm just going to give a quick tutorial on how to use StarNet Plus. Um, what StarNet does is it allows you to create a star mask and remove the stars so you can just work on the nebulosity. I know, really freaking cool. And what it does is it really allows you to not oversaturate your stars. We do, as astrophotographers, we do a lot of work on the back end to bring colors out, bring brightness out. And at the same time, what happens often is the stars get blown out. Uh, in my previous videos, you'll notice I talk about how it's important to not have the stars be blown out. You want them to be nice and round and that people can focus on the whole scape, not just the largeness of the stars. So the easiest way to get to this after a finalized image or close to final image like this, you want to go to script, oh, I'm sorry, process, all processes, StarNet. Now these two StarNet weights you would need to get off of PixInsight's website. And I always create a star mask. Stride 128 I think is the best you can use. I hit this to run it and this will run and remove the stars from the image and actually put them into a star mask that you can work with. So I will actually be back when this is finished running and we'll talk then. We're back. So as you see, done is all that they have to tell you that this is finished. Um, if we exit out of that and exit out of this guy, you'll see we have a plethora of stars in the image and this is not what we're looking for. We want this. Now look how awesome that is. What a cool shot you get. Starless images are awesome. So now, the cool part, what you can do, is you can go to intensity transformation and curves transformation on this image. And as you see there, my normal S-curve worked great. So what I would do is I would go through here and I would run a little small S-curve, which, there you go, look at that. That brings out a lot of detail of the image. And I'd play around with these sliders a little bit, see what I like, um, just to kind of maybe bring down this really bright blue area here just a wee bit. Um, that can, you know, sometimes get blown out. Um, maybe redo my S-curve a little bit here. And something like that. So as you can see, there's a major difference between this and just doing that right there. We can put that on our actual image, and now what we can do is we can actually take this and now re put it back together with pixel math. So if you go to pixel math, you put in the name of your current image, add a plus sign, and put the name of our star mask, which is always star underscore mask. You hit this, and there you go. Now we re added back our stars. They're not blown out at all, and we actually were able to tweak our background image, which looks really cool. Now, I would do this before I ran a star reduction. Um, I think that this and then a star reduction would really make the image pop and is probably the more correct way to do this. Um, and so, just looking at this image alone, you can really like take a look at your nebulosity and what's going on. It's real. It really makes it neat. Um, it's super simple to get a starless image. When I first started, I thought, oh my gosh, it's hard. You do sometimes get little things like this. Um, now that can be fixed with different stride settings, making the backgrounds a little darker. It's a little bit kind of noisy up there. Um, but when you look at this overall image, it's a very impressive starless image, I think. That just about wraps it up. Just a quick little video on how to use StarNet, and uh, hopefully it helps you. Uh, if you have any questions down below, leave them down there, and like and subscribe. Have a great day.